Então, hoje estamos trabalhando na penúltima segunda-feira do mês, porque na próxima segunda está havendo festas prolongadas. So we are giving today lecture and not next week because next week there are going to be another movement. But in March we will return to work the last final Monday, which is the 27th of March, all right? And today we will develop a subject very important for our life, seeking unity and love. If we developed this seek for unity and love, we are going to search to revere something that is very important for our evolution as we will see. But today we will begin to see, first of all, unity. We are just going to talk about a little bit these subjects, all right? But we will leave you the task of developing this within yourselves eventually in the silence of your reflections. So, unity is a quality for us to not be divided. So, is a quality that it helps a lot to our inner integrity, unity. Because if innerly we are divided in a certain thing, we won't have peace and we won't have all our capacity of deciding things or to leave certain things. So unity, that is this quality, the quality that we have for not being divided, this would have to be very worked. And the quality of not being divided, it opens doors so that we may live in a unification. So for us, in order to be unified, for us to be an entire being, is necessary to work the non-division in ourselves and the results of all of this. Now, unity, quality of unity is also about harmony because if you maintain this unity, almost naturally you will be in harmony and this takes to a certain equality to a higher harmony with some other elements that might be humans or not humans. There could be things or situations. So all of this is are going to need a unity of principles. So you have a lot of principles, everyone has a lot of principles, but must be in unity in these principles, not some of them being in contrast with the others. All of this destroys you, the unity of the being, the inner unity of the being, of a being. And we will have to, having a purpose, having a harmony of principles, to try to give a continuity in this and as long as this works for our goals. And in here we will have to continue this, we will have to maintain the purpose. And also unity in the, me in the most inner, in the more inner meaning, which means harmonizing efforts among people. This means people, they, if they are harmonized, if, if they unified, 
they can do this if they make an effort. So a, a union of effort is necessary in order to see a result in this field that is so important for living. So now we will see very quickly the matter of love. Well, what traditionally is called as is known as love, what humanity love calls love, is a way of interaction in between among people, and this interaction, according humanity, happens due to affinities or due to a formality that can be pre-established in a social way. So this love exists, this love that comes from the interaction among people or of formality that can be adopted in a social way. And also, humanity considers love to strong affections. So, well, we are not going to talk about these kind of loves because we are just saying that they exist, all right? They are used by humanity in a very ordinary way. It sounds very normal. And also, the communion in an intimate way among individuals. And this is considered love in a human level. Well, now there's also a concept of love that is a way that in a way that protects us. So a lot of people use love in order to feel protected, in order to feel together, and love in this case is used for all of this. And in here, emerges a more intimate communion among individuals. And all of this is human love, ordinary, the thing that is out there and that we know very well and that we see how this is used so commonly. Now, there's a moment in which this can change. This can change, this can be different. And when this, when it is this movement, well, when we have a certain feeling turn to the height, not for all of the things that we mentioned before, but when we have a feeling in this way, turn to the height. This height, many times, it means a superior consciousness that might be in that degree. Or maybe turn to the height uh, is to what some call God. So the important is that this to be the height, something very high on top of all of the things that we described before and on top of all of the people and groups that we mentioned. Now, when this feeling is turned to the heights and is centered up there, this degree or this height or God, he receives this love, right? And it responds. And when, when the height responds, when this happens, an answer descends and permeates that love that we sent. And when this, when the heights respond, when God responds to the love that you directed to Him, our love completely changes and it turns into something different. It's something with some other qualities. And in there, we will have the possibility of loving in a different way to all of the things that we love in our way, our own way, which means that those that are beginning to, to 
break the illusion in the way of loving of those that are breaking the illusion with the response to their love do not waste more time uplift this love direct this love to the highest point that you may conceive and if you conceive that up there there is a God or a superior consciousness, place your love up there because that will respond in the love that you gave. It will begin to be transformed. And because what is up there, God or the heights, does not need our love, he receives our love, he emanates an answer, and our love descends in a different way. It descends with superior qualities to the ones that it had before, to the ones that we have. And in there, then, our life completely changes because our being of bonding, of respecting the other, of treating the other, the others completely changes. But this was transformed up there in the heights. This was transformed in a level that was not this one, terrestrial, earthly, horizontal, which means that if we, it is suggested to love God directly and to concentrate in that love in that point very high and this is a great advice a good way to use our energy that is called love so now let us go to the third point which is reverence which is today's subject unity love and reverence to love the high, the heights, to love God, or to love the creation in overall, to love what was created and that is perfect in its origin, to love this, we have to revere, which means that it's a little bit different. This love will, when begins to go up, to be uplifted, it transforms into reverence. And this reverence has another effect. This reverence transforms our life in a different way. So we need to learn to love the heights, to try to love the heights, and there to begin to venerate the heights, venerate. Venerate, and this is learn. This is something to be that can be trained through different processes. So you end up venerating the heights, and to begin with, you will have to respect. So you, if you look up the heights, you have to respect that. To to have a deep respect, and with this deep respect, you will begin to venerate, to venerate, and if it's about something that is up in the heights, and that is a consciousness, a living consciousness that you feel through this veneration, then there you can other rate, which means there are different levels of love. If you look down with something, or if you look to the horizontal, or if you look up there, if you look up there, there are some other results. And in here, it's about respect, and from the respect, you go to the veneration, and from veneration, you go to adoration. Of course, that the effect of the respect that takes us to veneration, it's something more subtle, more interior. Now, the effect of adoration goes even beyond. Adoration 
lead us to an identification with what is being adored. In this identification to what is being adored, this produces a penetration of our consciousness in a superior level of consciousness. Naturally, we are talking about veneration and adoration of superior things, right? Superior things, higher things, or abstract superior things, or superior consciousnesses. But this means that if you get to venerate or even to adore you there you found something that is the essence of the sacred something that you didn't know before we do not know the center of the sacred to feel the sacred to feel that the feeling of the sacred to have this experience of being touching something sacred you need to love the heights, to venerate the heights, to adore the heights. And with that work of adoration, with that very real work of adoration, you will begin to perceive something that is completely unknown and completely out of this world, completely out of everything that is material and completely out of also the material love that we know it a little bit and then we make it evolve. So when you can adore, you begin to experiment, you begin to have expe the experience of something that is called sacred. All of these words have a very special origin, and these words have a power, which means that the word sacred, for example, is something very subtle, something very inner, something very abstract, and that you can only feel this sacred. You can only feel it when you learn to venerate and to adore. So, veneration and adoration for what is superior, for what is very distant from ourselves, infinitely distant from ourselves, up there in the heights. So, this will lead us to kind of experience of the sacred, and this has no description. And this is necessary for us to enter in this path because in there, our feelings, our thoughts, our attitudes, our way of being will adapt, will be adapted to what's still unknown, but it will begin to open to this. So this is a very special process and very important for life, very important, because who does not dedicate to this or who cannot approach to this or who cannot walk towards these experiences states with a very stereo life, with a very physic life, stays with a dense life or stays with a life in terms of colors kind of darkness that can be clarified or get even darker according to the circumstances that you can live. Well, a very spiritual and evolved being said that in this transition in which the, the earth is preparing to go through, that we all go through as a planet, that during this transition is very important that we may have have learned the act of loving because during the transition during the trials of the transition before the events that will happen in here not 
Without the experience of touching, of having the art of love, then we will have a lot of difficulties because this love, this adoration, all of this, this will help us a lot because if this got to a good point, we will begin to accept and to love this transition, which means that we are in a completely different situation and all of this work done with love and all this presence of love naturally will make that our transition might be way more soft and harmonious. So, let us see, let us hear a little bit of text that talks about this, that is a very special text and that begins saying, you must remember, discover today the art of loving at the end of times. We are living at the end of a time, we are living at the end of a cycle and exist an art of living in this end of times that is what is being recommended to us and how can we begin to prepare ourselves to live at the end of times we have to begin to try to love what the other is not what we are we have to love what is beyond ourselves, what comes after us. So this is how we train ourselves to love at the end of times. Because when you begin to train to love what is beyond yourself, you are loving what is heaving in a state of chaos. And this, depending on the quality of your love, will give you a situation completely different as the great majority that in those moments will be with a sensation of chaos. So in here it says, you must remember today the art of living in the end of times, which is the art of you to transform yourself, placing attention beyond yourselves. I don't have to repeat, right? This is days very clear, right? So this is an extraordinary lesson for the upcoming times and also for our for the way that we are going to be in the times that will come. I'm going to repeat. So you must discover today, a great instructor says, you must discover today the art of living in the end of times, the art of transforming yourselves and to place attention beyond you, beyond yourselves. Well, this is a, a formula like a math, mathematics, spiritually speaking. There is no other way for you to go through this end of the times with, without losing your harmony or your vibration. This is how you must be. Well, now, in here we receive an exercise clear for you to may perfectionate in this, to let this to grow, to for this to have a a direction within yourselves. And in here we have an exercise. Let us pay a lot of attention in this exercise because it's for the great majority and it can work a lot. So, first exercise to place your consciousness in what it thinks that the universal love is, which means each consciousness has a degree, which means that each one of us sees the universal love in, in a specific way. In the way as you can conceive universal love, universal love has nothing to do with personal love, has nothing to do with groupal love, 
obviously. So you place your consciousness in what for you is universal love. Even though you don't see a clear picture, but place your consciousness in there and you will have a, a good result. So place your consciousness there thinking that this is a great heart, that that is a heart as if there is a creator in, in the heights where you will place your consciousness is the heart of this creation, is the central, the nucleus of this. So place your consciousnesses in the universal love, thinking in the heart of that. Those that use God, let us say, in the heart of God. If you don't talk about God, is in the heart of that energy, primordial energy that me, that created everything from where everything began. So place your consciousness in you, the universal love and thinking in that great heart, that infinite heart, right? And feeling that this this holy and grandiose heart, heart. Try to feel it. Try to feel something placing your consciousness there. And from that point on, the exercise recommends for you to begin to imagine all life, this sea of infinite life that is not any more, any longer your personal life is an infinite sea of la lives where your life is. Imagine this infinite sea and then also begin to see this infinite cosmos, this thing that is endless, that is limitless. Put your thinking in here and then begin to see the universes because the cosmos is much more than the universe. Universe is something almost material, and there are infinite of universes, and all of the universes form the cosmos. Place your mind in this with a lot of love, with the love that you have, and in there, go to the universes, then take this love, the love that you have as it is, and put it in, on the planet Earth, that is the planet that is receiving you, that is where you are currently living in. So use this love, put this love on the planet Earth, and then begin to Use your, your love in your nations, in the nations of the planet. So, from the cosmos, go to the universes. From the universe, go to the planet. From the planet, go to the nations and see all of these, all of the nations of the planet and enveloped cover all this with your love and then you after doing this work with nations you turn yourself to the kingdoms of nature so look at the mineral plant animal human devic kingdoms work with the kingdoms visualizing the kingdoms looking at them one by one. Now, at this point of the exercise, you make a synthesis and recognize yourself little, because you've seen so many infinite things and recognize yourself little. Do not want to Compare yourself with that. Begin to consider yourself a little before the creation, before all of the things that you visualize and feel yourself very little. 
and begin to see that being so little, you have to take a certain responsibility for being a part of it with your life because you have a life that you need to carry on and you have to become responsible. You have to begin to develop the responsibility because if you imagine all of this and if you already identified yourself with all of this, it means that you have a little bit of responsibility with this. Otherwise, you will be thinking about something else which means that you are a person that has a certain responsibility. So now you assume this responsibility. If you gave, if you use all your time doing this exercise, you did not desist and you got to this point, then now you assume your responsibility because you have a certain responsibility and you are responsible for this. You are the owner of this. This is you. And then dispose yourself with your responsibility and dedicating yourself to your transformation so, so that you do not stay disconnected with all of the things that you imagined. And all this work plays you in a different point. And then now you will try to identify yourself with all of this and to be very in peace and entired within this. Now, when you got to a certain state with this reflection, with this exercise, then the exercise continues. When you got to this state, then begin to reflect about nations. And when you begin to reflect about nations, you have to see what effects the nations have on you. Observe the nations, the state that they are, how these nations show themselves to you. Observe this with a lot of calm and tranquility. And then within this, you, after doing all this work, you will have the chance to see then these nations in a situation that is not very harmonious and you will see that within nations there is a suffering, pain. This, if you are truly dedicated to work, to have an exercise to may be useful, then you have to begin to recognize all of this, which means that you will see sufferings in all these nations, the suffering of humanity, the suffering of the kingdoms of nature, the suffering of the mineral, plant, animal, human kingdoms. So this is the picture that you will have before, yours, before you. And if this is not enough, if you do not get to a state of the moved in order to take a decision, a new attitude, then you can, according to the instruction who teach this exercise, you can imagine the sad eyes of a children in Africa, a child that was separated from their parents and he was kidnapped and then their organs were taken away in order to be sell. So imagine the eyes of a child in this situation, the eyes of an African child, because they said that 
You have to see in the eyes how much a child suffers during a war, for example. Do you perceive the work that is being done in you? That even with your indifference, even with your indifference, you begin to be touched before an exercise like this. And you can imagine all those children with hunger, having nothing to eat, look at their eyes, see how they are, their eyes are. So find their eyes. And then for you to leave this picture, you think about the great cities, see a great city, the ones that we got before our eyes. A city is always something very big, bigger than our environment. So if you can think about a great, a big city, and to see a big city during this exercise, you will see how that big city has resources to exist. The stadiums have resources, light, electricity, water, all of these things, and you see then the spiritual poverty that exists out there. See the spiritual poverty, see the contrast among all of the things that are in there, so well structured, materially speaking, that you feel there the spiritual poverty that exists. If this happens, you went through positively through the first part of the exercise because you will feel the spiritual poverty and you will see that all of the things that you felt at the beginning that was something very inner, something very sacred, pure, you won't find it now looking at these things. But you find energies going around freely energies that are all of the contrary to the energies that you placed on the exercise. Try to see this, try to visualize this. And it is not hard to visualize this because we are seeing all of this every day. Only that this, we are seeing it today as an exercise, trying to use this for a transformation. So, in the mass of a great city, try to see the pain of the kingdoms of nature. Try to see the trees that exist on the streets of a great city. There are utterly, there are total, that are on the ground. On the streets with no earth, you see that the rain pours, but cannot go into the earth, goes, into the f goes to the floor, to a fake floor. So see what the roots of the tree feels and what they have to do in order to find real water. So these are, this is one of the pictures that you can see in this exercise. And this will begin to help you to develop something in you and to move you. If you at the beginning thought in God what is going to change now in you is going to be something very different than sadness, which means that you in here, you will develop something very different because you began the exercise thinking in the heights. And now the heights will help you to work all of this with his energy. So, see the trees and their condition on the streets without the chance of getting their roots wet 
and you will see the flora, you will see mankind firing the herbs, burning the fields, killing all of the microorganisms that are on the earth. They cannot kill the earth because earth has such is is so deeper so deep that can still survive but see what is at the back of all of this and then after doing this exercise after seeing all of this look at yourself look at your inner world and see how it is you have to see if something changed in you since the beginning of the exercise of, or if it's in the same thing. Because if the exercise was done in the right way, it was done with a good will, with an intention, then at this point, when you see the trees that cannot drink water when you see the fields bur being burned, then look at you, look within yourself, look and see if within you, you can see what you were seeing at the beginning. And then you will see that even though all of this, when you look at yourself, when you look within yourself, you will see that from the beginning, you will see what you were seeing at the beginning. You will f find that after all the training done, after all this work in which you were paying attention in things that aren't you, that you adapt yourself to pay attention to something that it is not interest have no interest in you. But then when you turn your eyes again to you, you will see that when you look within yourself, you find what you were looking at when you were looking at the heights. This is the exercise that was suggested for us for this work. Now, let us see a little bit more about love. And there is a love that transcends human condition. And this love that transcends human condition can be within yourself, but also this love can only be recognized, seen after you try to study all of this after you exercised in a very conscious way all of the things that are surrounding you the whole life that is around you but that you don't perceive you live like in your own world but you perceiving all of this and looking at yourself within you you will find what at the beginning of the exercise you were looking for so, there is a love that transcends this condition that you find within yourself. And this love that you find in you, that you feel, what you were observing that is inside of you, calls you for you to be like this love, for you to add yourself to this and try to see how this love is in order to imitate it, to do as he, how he would like for you to do it. So this is called a humble love. That humble love that was seen at the beginning in here is where you will find this. When you look within yourself and you see all of this and you say, well, now, what do I do? How do I do it? How do I do to may deal with all of this? How do I do to live within this? 
This is called humble love, and is within this humility, and is within this state of love that you will discover a certain thing. This humble love that you find is that love that is guarding your inner reality. So you found this humble love, and then you found what is guarding you. Because what is guarding you? It is not letting you to not see things that shows you things and then continue guarding you. And when you feel like this, when you feel in there secure, safe, then you look outside, to the outside again, and you will see that you will deal with things in a different way as you did it till today. Good. In here, when you look things in a different way, love in a different way, then you stay, begin to stay with a possibility, with a quality of loving what is limitless, to love what it is not oppressed for these things. You feel this possibility, you feel this path, and then you begin to you will love the possibility that the other has to evolve. And then you will see that all these lost people have the possibility of evolving. And you then will love this, the possibility for them to evolve. You got it? You, when you return to this exercise, you will be loving the possibility that they have to evolve. You will love the capacity that they would have to do the same exercise that you are doing or to find some other tracks. Because this love, the love to the other, the love to the infinite is found through infinite paths. Not only doing this exercise, this exercise is a suggestion, right? for who does not know how to begin or what to do, or for those who are not secure nor satisfied in the way of loving. Because after humanly loving for so long, at a certain point, someone we realize that this human way of loving that this does not lead us to something good, and at a certain point you will realize this. This exercise can take you to think about this, to reflect about this, and to begin to anticipate a work, but a work that is about seeing the other to loving the possibility the other has to evolve, of loving, to, of, to serve so that the other can grow. And in here you will stop taking care of yourself and you will begin to try to help the others so the other can grow. If this happens, you already turn a key when you help the other to grow. And when you see that someone fell, you will have a natural movement of taking the other and raising it up. So it happens something within yourself. You are different after this. And then you, looking at this, you, will, you have to remember what we talked at the beginning, knowing that exists an evolutive plan and that this plan took you to all this process and then you will love this plan. You will say, well, there is a plan that took me to have all this experience, so I want to love this plan. But how do I love this plan? 
Well, but actually you already began to see the one who suffer, the one that has nothing to eat. You already began to see the eyes of those children that are out there totally lost. You already have all of this within yourself. You have the preparation. You have, you grew, you leave your chair, you leave your couch, you stood up in order to walk towards something. And all of this is the result of an exercise. And you won't you will feel more alive. But it is not something concrete that will appear all of a sudden. And you have always to renovate yourself. You always have to renovate the, the way of looking within yourself. You have to renovate the experience that what is within yourself answers to you in a certain way. You have to renovate this exercise. It seems that even doing all of this, you will end the exercise thinking that everything finished. Well, then you will think that you have not this love. Don't fear to think this. But because in this way your ego will begin to lose a little bit of power. At the end of the exercise you will realize that you continue not loving. You will realize about this. And then your ego will begin to become smaller, and if your ego, very small, looks to what is up there and says, look, please receive me because I want to do it again, then something very strange happens because that little ego stays little, but it feels in another way. And it sees in a situation that it never felt before, and in there something will happen. Something will work on the ego, and you consciously won't know what is working on your ego, but something will be working it. Something is working you. Something is doing something in you. But what is this? What do we think that is working? On me. It is me, or what created me, or something that I don't know what it is, but what is working with me? And then just let yourself to be worked. Do not fear. Let that what's working you to take you. Do not fear. Do not return. Do not go back. Let this to work you, to work on you. Because one day, or maybe, who knows, depending on the sincerity in which you are making this an exercise, and depending on your necessity of finding what is working with you. Because when you find it, when you have a contact with this, knowing that something is working you, do never again abandon this. Look at that and say, do not abandon me, never, do not abandon me, because I want to be worked. This is an exercise. So, well, all of this is what we, in the way that we, is what we live. When we begin to love something that is in the heights, and to stop, every, to leave everything in here, down here, quiet, until taking all the other impulses, but it's necessary to e experiment. So we will continue next week, the next time. We still do not know what we're going to talk about, but who knows if this exercise can continue? Who knows? 
and this exercise can continue, yes, because it is a work meaning reverence. In all this process, we can learn how to revere. Who knows if next time we are going to work reverence, which is the way to gaining all of this. You have to revere something, something that is not concrete. You have to revere something. And let us see if we will get there. Thank you all for the attention.